Welcome YouTubers to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In this video, I'm going to be working out practice problems from the arithmetic reasoning section of the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB. Uh, before I do that, however, I just want to make a few comments about the ASVAB itself. Uh, first, I want to point out uh, that the ASVAB is a computer adaptive test for which you're not allowed to use a calculator or a reference sheet. So in light of that, um, you should try to work out all these problems without using a calculator. Um, in addition to posting a link uh, to this practice test in the description of this video, I'm also going to be posting uh, links to some study materials I personally use to prepare for the ASVAB, including uh, the most recent copy of ASVAB, ASVAB for Dummies. So uh, that said, um, let's go ahead and get started with this practice video. Um, normally I introduce what the ASVAB is and why it's important, uh, but in this case I'm just going to work out the problems. I will say this, however, these problems are very simple. Uh, and this video's purpose is to really help you uh, build up your ability to do uh, basic arithmetic uh, by hand. So um, that said, let's go ahead and get started. Question one, uh, the bride and groom invited 120 guests for their wedding reception. 90 guests arrived. What percentage of the guest list was not present? So we know 90 out of 120 arrived. That means 30 out of 120 did not show up, and we're asked to find what percent of the guest list was not present. Uh, to do that, we're going to work with this fraction here to the right, and we're going to reduce it to a percent. The first thing I'm going to do is kick off these zeros to make it 3 over 12. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is reduce this fraction a little further. I'm going to divide top and bottom by a common factor of 3. Uh, 3 goes into 3 one time. Uh, 12 divided by 3, of course, is 4. Of course, we all know 1 fourth is the same as 25%. So the answer in this case is B. All right, question two. If x is 75% of 360, what is x? So x equals 0.75 times 360. Um, this basically is a translation of this wording right here. x is 75% or 0.75 of 360. Uh, now, in this case, to find x, all we have to do is multiply 360 by 0.75, like that. Now, to multiply a uh, whole number by a decimal, we have to get rid of the decimal. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to take the decimal and move it to the right two places to make 0.75 just 75. So it's going to look like this. And at the very end of this problem, I'm going to add two decimal places back into the left. 0 times 5 is 0. 5 times 6 is 30. Carry the 3. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 3 is 15, 16, 17, 18. Bring down a 0 since we're starting this number. Uh, 0 times 7 is 0. 7 times 6 is 42. Carry the 4. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 4 is 25. Let's add. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 8 plus 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And 2 plus nothing is just 2. Bring our two decimal places back into the left. 1, 2. And we can see our answer is going to be 270. Okay. Number three, a philanthropist uh, donates two-fifths of his monthly income to for the construction of a nearby church. What percentage of his income is he donating? So again, we're told he's donating two-fifths of his monthly income. Uh, you can look at fractions as two over five, or you can read them as two divided by five to convert them to percentages. 
In this case, we're being asked to find the percentage. So I'm going to re rewrite this in long division. Uh, and this is 2 divided by 5. Um, now, to do long division, we say how many times does 5 go into 2 without going over? It doesn't. 2 is too small. So I have to add a 0. By adding this 0, I have to add a decimal up here. Now the question is, how many times does 5 go into 20? Uh, the answer, of course, is 4. 5 times 4, of course, is 20. 20 minus 20 is 0. So we can see that 2 divided by 5 is 0.4, and 0.4 is the same as 40%. Okay, number four, in a bundle of 30 fruits, six are apples and the rest are oranges. What percent of the bundle is composed of apples? So we're told that six out of 30 are apples. And before we actually do the long division, let's reduce this fraction by dividing the top by six, as well as the bottom by six. Six divided by six is one. 30 divided by 6 is 5. Now as we did up here, we can view this fraction as 1 over 5 or 1 divided by 5. So we're going to do 1 divided by 5. Uh, now we ask ourselves how many times does 5 go into 1 without going over? It doesn't. 1 is too small. Therefore we have to add a 0. By adding that 0 we have to put a decimal right there. Now the question is how many times does 5 go into 10 without going over? Uh, 2 times 5, of course, is 10. We subtract, therefore we have no remainder. So we know that 1 over 5 is the same as 0.2, which is equivalent to 20%. Okay, number 5. A writer finishes 360 pages of his manuscript in 40 hours. How many pages is his average? Uh, so, in other words, how many pages can he finish per hour? So we're going to do 360 divided by 40. Um, before I reduce this, I'm going to kick off these zeros. So this becomes 36 divided by 4. 36 divided by 4, of course, is 9. So we know that the writer can finish 9 pages every hour. Okay, number six, if you were making $5 per hour and got a raise to $5.75 per hour, what percentage increase was the raise? So to go from $5 to $5.75, that's 0.75 increase. I simply did 5.75 minus 5, which we should be able to do in our head. And to find that percentage increase, I'm going to divide this by 5. Um, now, you may be saying to yourself, how do I deal with the decimal and the numerator? Well, 0.75 is the same as 3 fourths. So we're going to do 3 fourths divided by 5. Now we're doing uh, fraction, we're doing division involving fractions. So this gives me the chance to talk about the keep, change, flip rule, which we probably heard before. Uh, you keep the top fraction the same so in that case we're going to leave three-fourths the same change it from division to multiplication and then you flip the bottom fraction in this case you can write all whole numbers as that number over one so instead of being five we can actually write it as five over one now we're going to flip five over one to be one over five now when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So this becomes 3, because 3 times 1 is 3. 4 times 5 is 20. Okay. Now the question is, what percentage is 3 divided by 20? Um, there's two ways you can go about doing this. Um, you can multiply the bottom, the numerator, and denominator by 5 and in so doing uh, 20 times 5 becomes 100 uh, 3 times 5 becomes 15 anything over 100 is a percentage so this would be 0.15 or 15 percent 
oops, where'd that go? 15%. Okay, which is C. Another way to have done this would have been 3 divided by 20, which would look like this. Again, you would say, uh, does 20 go into 3? It doesn't. 3 is too small. You have to add a 0. When you add that 0, you have to bring up a decimal. Does 20 go into 30? One time without going over. 1 times 20, of course, is 20. 30 minus 20 is 10. Now the question is, how many times does 20 go into 10? It doesn't. You have to add a 0. How many times does 20 go into 100? 5 times without going over. 20 times 5 is 100, so there's no remainder. Okay? So two ways to proceed from this point. Number seven, Grace answered 14 out of 20 questions correctly. What percentage of the total number of questions was she able to answer correctly? Uh, so we have 14 over 20. Uh, before I try to convert this to percent, I'm going to reduce it. Or, as I did up here, I can multiply it by 5 to put it over 100. That's what I'm going to do. Because 20 times 5 would be over 100, which will get us our percentage. So we're going to do 14 times 5. 5 times 4, of course, is 20. Carry the 2. 1 times 5 is 5, plus 2 is 7. So we know this is 70 over 100, which is the same as 0.7, which is the same as 70%. Okay. Uh, number 8 is a bad question, so I'm going to skip it. Uh, don't even waste your time reading it. It's just a bad question. Number nine. If a gym measures 25 feet by 38 feet, what is its area? So most gyms are rectangles. And in this case, we know it's 25 feet wide by 38 feet long. To find the area of the rectangle, you have to remember that it's length times width. Um, so in this case, area is going to be length 38 times width 25 so let's go ahead and work this out 38 times 25 8 times 5 is 40 carry the 4 3 times 5 is 15 plus 4 is 19 bring down a 0 since we're starting this number 2 times 8 is 16 carry the 1 2 times 6 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Let's add. Um, 0 plus 0 is 0. 9 plus 6 is 15. Carry the 1. 7 plus 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So we know that this is going to be 950. Okay, number 10. Jean had 2586 in her pocket. If shoes cost 750 a pair plus 10% tax how many pairs she, can she buy so the first thing I'm going to do is find out what 10% of 750 is and you should be able to do this one in your head 10% of 750 is just 75 cents okay so we're gonna go ahead and add this to 750 because this is the tax this is the selling price of the shoes uh, 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. Just drop down your decimal in place. Uh, carry the 1. 8 plus 1 is... or 7 plus 1 is 8. Again, this is a plus here. I don't know why, but multiply there. So one pair of shoes, including tax, is 825. Therefore, two pairs of shoes is 16. 50. Again, I just added 825 to 825. Therefore, four pairs of shoes is, or three pairs of shoes is 2475. Again, I just added 825 there, and I just added 825 there. So she has 2586, therefore, she could buy one, two, three pairs of shoes. Okay. Number 11, a family owns 20 dozens of magazines. After donating 78 magazines to the public library, how many magazines are still with the family? 
So the first thing I want to find out is how many there are in 20 dozen. So I'm going to do 20 times 12, since there are 12 in every dozen. Uh, 0 times 2 is 0. 2 times 2 is 4. Add a 0 since we're starting this number. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. Add. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. And 2 plus nothing is 2. So uh, 20 dozen is the same as 240 magazines. So now I'm going to take 240 and minus or subtract 78. Um, I can't do 0 minus 8. I have to borrow from this 4. This becomes a 3. This becomes 10. 10 minus 8 is uh, 2. Uh, 3 minus 7 I can't do. I have to borrow a 1 there. This becomes 13. Uh, 13 minus 7 is 6. 1 minus nothing is 1. So after donating 78 magazines to the library, the family still has 162 magazines left. Number 12, if three garbage trucks can collect the trash of 24 homes in a day, how many trucks are needed to collect in 72 houses? So the first thing I want to find out is how many, how many homes one truck can do. So I'm going to do 24 divided by 3. Uh, 24 divided by 3, of course, is 8. So in other words, one truck can uh, service 8 homes. So I'm going to do 72 divided by 8 uh, to figure out how many trucks we need to do 72 homes. Uh, it turns out that 8 goes into 72 9 times evenly with no remainder. So the answer, of course, is nine okay number 13 uh, if angles a and b are angles of a parallelogram what is the sum of the measures of the two angles okay so this is kind of what a parallelogram looks like and uh, we're told that we want to find out uh, what the sum of two angles are um, there's a formula for this, namely the sum of the interior angles of any polygon or shape are, is 180 times n minus 2, where n is the number of sides. In this case, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 sides. So we would plug 4 in for n. But in light of the fact that it doesn't specify what angles a and b are, a can be here, b could be here, or A could be there and B could be here. Um, the problem is, if you let A be these two, you're going to get a different answer than if you let A and B be these two, which means they did not give you enough information to answer this question because this answer would be different than this answer. Okay? But this is the formula you would use if you wanted to find the sum of interior angles of uh, a polygon. Okay, number 14, if a box has red and blue balls in a ratio of 3 to 4 red to blue, how many red balls are there if 80 blue balls are in the box? So again, we're going for a ratio of 3 to 4. Uh, we're told that there are 80 blue balls, and we want to find out how many red balls are in the box. Well, I always view ratios as fractions. And uh, to keep my math simple, I usually kick off zeros. And I know 4 times 2 will get me 8. If I multiply 3 by 2, that will get me 6. So I know 6 to 8 has the same ratio as 3 to 4. Therefore, 60 to 80, just by adding that 0 back in, will keep the same ratio as 3 to 4. So the correct answer is B60. Uh, 15, there are 47 convention participants staying in the university dorm dormitory. If one dormitory room accommodates six participants, how many participants will be staying in the room that is not full? Okay, so in this case, we know there are 47 people participating in this convention, and each room accommodates 
six people. So six times seven would be 42. Okay, so in other words, seven rooms would, seven full rooms would accommodate 42 people, whereas eight rooms, eight times six is 48, would accommodate 48 people. We know there's 47 people, so we know there's going to be person 43, 44, 45, 46, and 47 in uh, room 8. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 people in uh, the 8th room. Okay? 16. There are 40 rooms that need to be painted and only 6 painters available. If there are still 10 rooms unpainted by the end of the day, what is the average number of rooms that each painter has painted? So there are 40 rooms that need to be painted. At the end of the day, there are 10 unpainted rooms. That means that over the course of the day, they paint at 30 rooms. And we know that there are six painters working on painting. So we do 30 divided by six, which is an average of five rooms uh, per painter. Number 17. Linda needs two-fifths of an ounce of salt to make one cup of dip for fries. How many cups of dip sh can, will she be able to make if she has 40 ounces of salt? Okay, so we're told that um, it takes two-fifths to make one cup of dip. Uh, two-fifths of one ounce. So I'm going to do 40 divided by two-fifths to find out how many cups that will make of of dip. In this case we're doing division with fractions and as I mentioned earlier in this video we're going to use keep change flip uh, and again as I mentioned earlier in this video we can write all whole numbers as fractions by putting them over 1. So I'm going to rewrite this to be 40 over 1 divided by 2 over 5. Now let's use our keep change flip rule we got 40 over 1. We're keeping that the same. We're going from division and changing that to multiplication. And we're flipping this second fraction to be 5 over 2. Now we're multiplying straight across. 40 times 5, of course, is 200. 1 times 2 is 2. So this becomes 200 divided by 2 which is just 100. Therefore, we know 40 ounces of salt will make 100 cups of dip. Okay, number 18, an architect's floor plan uses a half inch to represent one mile. What is the actual distance represented by four and a half inches? Um, so we know a half inch represents a mile. So let's go ahead and write this one out. We have one half inch. We have one. I'm just adding one half over and over again. One and a half inches. Two inches. Two and a half inches. Three inches. Three and a half inches. Four inches. Four and a half inches. And again I'm just adding half, 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 half and so on. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine miles. Again, there's no shame in writing out a little chart like this, especially when the math's very easy to do mentally. Uh, that way you can just get the question right and move on. On uh, number 19, in a deck of cards, there are two spades, three hearts, five clubs, and eight diamonds. What is the probability that Alan will pick out a spade? So probability is determined using this formula. Probability equals the desired outcome by the, divided by the total. Okay, um, that's not the exact formula, but that that's good enough for the ASVAB. 
probability equals desired outcome divided by the total. Um, and probability always ranges from uh, 0 to 1. Okay. So whenever you're asked for the probability, just bear in mind it's always going to range from 0 to 1. Um, let's find the total first. Two spades, three hearts, five clubs, and eight diamonds. Let's go ahead and add this up. Two plus three is five. Five plus five is ten. Plus eight is eighteen. So again, we're working with probability. We know the total number is eighteen. Uh, we're desiring to pick a spade, and we know there are two of those. So the probability of picking a spade is 2 over 18. We can reduce this dividing by dividing top and bottom by a common factor of 2. 2 divided by 2, of course, is 1. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So the probability of picking a spade is 1 ninth. All right, question 20. If a tutor earns $1 per hour, how much will she earn in a week? If she reports on Mondays and Thursdays, 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. to noon, and 1 p.m. to 7, and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to noon. Okay, so Monday, Thursday. Let's find out how many hours she works. Um, she goes from 10 to 11, and 11 to 12. So that's two hours, and then she comes back from 11 or 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, and 6 to 7. So on Mondays she works 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 hours. We multiply that by 2 to get how many hours she works on Monday and Thursday. So on Monday and Thursday she's working 16 hours. On Saturday, which I'll do over here, she works from 9 to noon, so that's 9 to 10, 10 to 11, and 11 to 12. So on Saturday, she's working 3 hours. We'll go ahead and add this to her Monday and Thursday hours, so 16 plus 3 is 19, which is right here, since she works, she earns $1 per hour. That's pretty close to my YouTube earnings. Um, what is the prime factorization of 560? Um, so prime factorization is when you take the number and you break it down like this. 560 is the same as 280 times 2 and so on and so forth. Um, there's an easier way to deal with prime factorization on the ASVAB if you're even asked it. Um, all you do is simply multiply these answer choices and whichever one gives you 560 is the right answer. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 7 is 210. Is that 560? No, so that's not the prime factorization of 560. 5 times 7 is 35, so we know there's no way that's the prime factorization of uh, 560. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So this is 16 times 5 times 7 is 35. Let's go ahead and work that out. 5 times 6 is 30, carry the 3. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 is 18, 19, 20, 21. Add a zero since we're starting this new number. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 3 is 3. Let's add. 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 1 is 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. So this does equal 560. All the numbers are prime, therefore we know this is the prime factorization of 560. If you do it this way, where you keep making the trees like this, uh, you're apt to make a mistake. Um, so just multiply these out, you'll get done much quicker. Alright, 22. I've got 26 quarts of milk and my family drinks 2 gallons of milk per week. How many weeks will that last us? Uh, to do this problem, you have to know there are 4 quarts. 
uh, per gallon. So uh, 26 quarts is the same as I'm basically converting 26 quarts to gallons via long division here. Uh, 4 goes into um, let's see oh I'm going to do it the opposite way I'm going to take gallons and convert them to quarts um, 2 gallons is the same as 8 quarts that is 2 times 4 because there are 4 quarts in every gallon so they're drinking 8 quarts of milk a week so we're going to do week 1 they drink 8 quarts week 2 they drink 16 quarts week three they drank 24 quarts and they still have two quarts left to drink so they're going to be able to drink at least three weeks they're going to have milk for three weeks all these other answer choices are two so we know d is the correct answer and in light of the fact of what our answer choices are i'm just going to stop working out the problem right there Okay, number 23, an employee's ratings on performance appraisals for the last three quarters were 92, 88, and 86. If the required yearly average to qualify for a promotion is 90, how much should the fourth quarter rating be? Uh, so this is an average problem, and uh, we set it up like this. We do 92 plus 88 plus 86 plus X which represents the unknown fourth quarter rating divided by 4 equals 90 again to find the average you add up all the numbers divide it by how many numbers there are and there in this case there's one two three four and we're told that to qualify for a promotion the average must be 90 so this is the average right here now we're just gonna solve for X and the first step I'm going to take is to get rid of this 4 by multiplying both sides by 4. Oops. Okay. This crosses out. This leaves us with 92 plus 88 plus 86 plus X equals 90 times 4 is 360 again 9 times 4 is 36 so 90 times 4 is 360 now we want to get X by itself so we have to move all these over to this side before I do that however I'm gonna add them all up 92 88 and 86 um, 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 6 is 16 carry the 1 uh, 9 plus 1 is 10 plus 16 is 26 so this is the same as 266 plus X equals 360 uh, to get X by itself I'm gonna divide I'm gonna subtract both sides by 266 so this leaves me and I'm gonna do the work up here with X equals 360 minus 266 that's a bad 6 there so let's work that out uh, 0 minus 6 we can't do so we have to borrow a 1 there that becomes 5 that becomes 10 10 minus 6 is 4 we can't do 5 minus 6 it's uh, too small so we have to borrow a 1 there this becomes 2 this becomes 15 15 minus 6 is 9 2 minus 2 is 0 so in other words, the, first, the fourth quarter rating has to be a 94 in order for this person's average of their appraisals to be 90 to qualify them for a promotion. Okay, 24. ABC Corporation only earned $120,000 during the previous year. One third only of management's predicted income. How much earning did the management predict? So, in other words, 
120,000 is equal to one third of some prediction that management had for their earnings. Uh, to solve this problem, and again, I just took this word problem and translated it into an algebra problem. Uh, now I'm going to solve for x. So to get x by itself, I'm going to multiply this side by 3. And when I multiply that side by 3, I have to do the same thing over here. Um, this crosses out. 3 times 1 third is just 1. So this just leaves us with x. So we're left with x equals 120,000 times 3. Don't be intimidated by big numbers. Um, we know 12 times 3 is 36. So 3 times 12 is 36. Now we just drop down these four zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can see that, therefore, the management predicted that the income was going to be 360000 which is B. Again, you may have noticed that throughout this video, you have to be pretty good with mental math. So instead of working this out, I'm just walking you through the mental math side of things, which will help you tremendously on test day. Okay, um, 25. May have reported to work at 8.45 a.m. So she got in at 8.45. Uh, she went out or left at 6.15. How many hours and minutes did she work? Did she stay in the office? So the way I like to do these is simply to write them out. Um, she reported at 8.45. She worked till 9 9.45, 10.45, 11.45, 12.45, 1.45, 2.45, 3.45, 4.45, 5.45, Five forty-five, and she left at six fifteen. So between five forty-five and six fifteen is thirty minutes. But let's go ahead and count up the hours: one hour, two hour, three hour, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours, eight hours nine hours and then add our 30 so we know in total she stayed in the office for nine hours and 30 minutes this question says nothing about lunch so we assume that she took lunch in her office i guess all right 26 42 passengers fit on my plane how many trips will i have to make to transport 104 people 100 miles in one day so uh Your first trip, you can take 42 people out of the 104. Your second trip, and I'm just going to double 42. 42 plus 42 is 84. After your second trip, you'll have taken 84 people. Again, I just added 42 there. And to find out how many people you've taken on your third trip, I'm just going to add 42 again. 4 plus 2 is 6. 8 plus 4 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 126. So we can see that it takes at least three plane planes, or three trips with the plane to transport 104 people. Okay? 27, a pole is 8 feet long. Okay, there's the pole. Um, and it's 8 feet long or tall. Its shadow is six feet long. There's the shadow at six feet. If you draw a line from the tip of the pole to the tip of the shadow, how long will it be? So from the tip to the tip. We can see right here that we have a right triangle. And we want to know how long this distance is here, uh, given these two distances. So in light of the fact we have a right triangle, we know we're going to use Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the length of the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, in case you don't remember, is always directly across from the right angle. 
so our hypotenuse in this case is x. Um, you can leave it as x or you can replace this x with c if you want. Uh, it doesn't matter. But 8 and 6 are the legs of this right triangle and they correspond to a and b. It doesn't matter if you let 8 equal a or 8 equal b. Um, it doesn't matter as long as you correctly identify the hypotenuse. Okay. So let's go ahead and start plugging things in. Um, 8 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. Um, let's work this out. 8 squared is 64. 6 squared is 36. And this is just c squared. Um, 64 plus 36 is 100 equals c squared. To get rid of this square, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Uh, when you square the square root, it just goes away, so you're left with c equals the square root of 100, which is 10. So therefore, the distance of this from this tip to this tip is 10. Twenty-eight. A company pays its writer three dollars for every three hundred words written. How much will a writer earn from an article with seven hundred and sixty words? Okay. So if they make three dollars for three hundred words, that means they make a dollar for every hundred words. So let's add this up. Um, for two hundred words, that's going to be two dollars. Three hundred words, that's three dollars. 400 words, that's four, $4. 500 words, that's $5. Uh, 600 words, that's $6. And 700 words, that's $7. So we know the answer is going to start with the 7, which eliminates all these other choices. And uh, if they're getting a hundred, a dollar for every 100 words, for the remaining 60 words, they're going to get 60 cents. So we can see right here the answer is 760. Uh, 29, an item in the store originally priced at $300 was marked down 20% and then an additional 15% was the final sale price of the item. Okay, so let's go ahead and work this out. Uh, we know it started at $300. The first discount was 20%, so let's multiply this by 0.2 to find the amount of discount. Uh, again, we're multiplying by a decimal. To make it easier, we're going to move this decimal to the right one place, so it's 300 times 2 instead of 0.2, and we'll add the decimal back in at the end. Uh, 0 times 2 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0, 3 times 2 is uh, 6. Bring our one decimal back in. So we can see that the first discount was in the amount of sixty dollars. Uh, Three hundred minus sixty is two forty. So this is the price after the first discount was applied. Now we've got to work on the additional discount of fifteen percent or 0 0.15. Let's multiply that out. So now we have two forty times. 0.15, bring that decimal place over twice, and we'll add it back in at the end. So now we're doing 240 times 15 instead of 0.15. Um, 5 times 0 is 0. 4 times 5 is 20. Carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Bring down a 0 since we're starting this number. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Let's add. Um, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 2 plus 4 is 6, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Bring our two decimal places back in, 1, 2. So we can see that the second discount of 15% was $36. So we take our 240 and we subtract 36 from it, which is just going to be 204. Uh, final question, a newlywed, a newlywed couple bought a car with uh, $3,500 down uh, and needs to pay $580 per month for four and a half years. How much did they have to pay for that car? 
all in all. So uh, we're told that they pay 580 per month for four and a half years. So I want to convert years to months and then do the math. Uh, there are 12 months in a year. So four times 12 is um, 48 plus half a year, which is six months. A plus four is uh, 14, carry the one. Uh, four plus one is five. So four and a half years is the same as 54 months. Again, I did 12 times four for the four years, and there are six months in half a year. That's how I got this 48 plus six. So we're gonna take 580 multiply by 54 to find out how much they're going to pay in those four and a half years. Zero times four is zero. Eight times four is 32. Carry the three. Five times four is 20 plus three is 23. Bring down a zero since we're starting this five. Five times zero is zero. Eight times five is 40. Bring this four up. Five times five is 24 uh, plus Four, 5 times 5 is 25 plus 4 is 29. Let's add. 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus 0 is 2. 3 plus 0 is 3. 2 plus 9 is 9, 10, 11. Carry the 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. Let's add our deposit to this. So this is going to be 31, or this is our down payment. 31, 320 plus 30. 500. Let me rewrite that. That's not good. 31320 plus 3500. 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus 0 is 0. 3 plus 5 is 8. Uh, 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 plus nothing is just 3. So this should be Oh, I made a mistake. 2 plus 0 is 2 right there. Sorry about that. So in total, they paid 34820 which is right there. Okay. Um, so that's all I have for you in this video. Uh, as I said at the beginning, there's nothing too hard in this video. That said, uh, this, this practice test does test your ability to deal with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, including with decimals and fractions. Uh, that right there is the key to doing well on the ASVAB, that is to get good at those four different uh, types of arithmetic questions. And so um, if you found this video helpful, uh, feel free to give me a thumbs up and leave some positive feedback in the comment section below. Uh, but on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.